Well, Nintendo finally has released the Champions Ballad. They caught everyone off guard by showing off a new trailer for it and announcing that it was out that day at the Game Awards. And here is what we at Bro Trio thought of it. Now, the Champions Ballad is the second piece of DLC, and it is a two-pack. To my knowledge, you can't buy either separately, not that you would want to. But it's $20 for two DLCs, one of which is just items to wear. That's the first one. And then the second one is more items to wear and some other actual like story-driven DLC. The actual side quest for the Champions Ballad I liked a lot. Like It got me really back into Breath of the Wild. I was never really out of it because I'm collecting Korok seeds here and there, but Breath of the Wild definitely wasn't on my top to playlist, and Champions Ballad definitely put it back up there for this past week. And I gotta say, it's felt uh, really great. It's uh, kind of like replaying it again, and this is my second playthrough on it because I've been playing through it on Master Mode. That's where I did the DLC. And it was just great to explore the world again and kind of get lost in it. I didn't really teleport that much because I just I didn't want to. I just was having fun exploring Hyrule again. But overall, the amount of like uh, content in the downloadable content for the Champions Ballad is very good in my opinion it uh, without getting too spoilery off the bat here it has another you know shrine there's I think 12 new shrines I guess 11 if you count the beginning quests of the Champions Ballad on the Great Plateau and then there's another Divine Beast another boss battle some new horse gear which is amazing and then some other new items that you can't upgrade or die which is kind of eh. but some of them have some cool abilities like yeah there's some cool abilities so with that being said spoiler warning if you don't want spoilers for the champions ballad stop watching now So, the big thing of the Champions Ballad is the they showed it in the trailer, Link gets a motorcycle, and this is utterly ridiculous. <laughs> it was way out of, it was almost as out of left field as Cloud being announced for Smash Brothers. Like, if it wasn't talked about them in the development that they originally wanted Link to have a motorcycle, this would have just floored me. I mean, it still pretty much floored me, but it, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. And um, you saw it on the Great Plateau. You do the one-hit Obliterator, like shrine-type quest, which was honestly one of my favorite parts. It was very strategic. It reminded me a lot of the Event Tide Island shrine, but. It was it was really fun. Like I couldn't get enough of it. The only thing that sucked were Keese. Like the swarm of Keese killed me more times than I care to count, and it was very embarrassing because it's it's Keese. I mean, come on. My only complaint about that part was that they took the Lionel off the Great Plateau, and I wanted to one hit a Lionel so bad. Oh man, but. It was still fun nonetheless, dealing with Lazalfos and Moblins and Bacoblins and Keith and Chews. It was, you know, a really cool way to get you back into the game. And then you went and you did, you know, the Urbosa Shrines. You got to hear Urbosa's ballad, read her diary. You got to read Rivali's diary and do his shrines. It was all a bunch of cool stuff. They introduced some new bosses, like I think his name is Moldu King. The new hyped up Molduga that it gets hurt by shock weapons. And there was him, there was the uh, 
what's it called? The Lava Talus Titan. That one was really fun. And then there were a lot of the uh, go through the ring, ring quests. I think every champion had one of those. For the most part, they were all pretty fun. And for the most part, I loved all the quests, I guess is what you call them, to make the shrines actually appear. Some of them seemed a little tedious, and you had to wait a while, like uh, waiting on Denral to show up in that one spot to shoot him in the horn, and waiting on the sun to come up in that one spot to sail into it. Those took a bit of waiting, but, you know, I mean, it's... I could. I went and I chopped down some grass, caught some bugs, fought some bokoblins while I was waiting. It's not like I hated waiting. But that being said, the divine beast at the end was like the divine beast I was wanting in the actual game. It felt like the. It felt like Ganon's castle from the past Zelda games, because it implemented like elements of each divine beast from that point, and it was all in one. Plus, it had actual guardians in it, which was ridiculous. I did not expect that. Like the second, I think I completed the second lock part in the divine beast, and there was just a guardian turret sitting there. It really surprised me. But the boss battle was really, really intense. I liked it a whole hell of a lot. Because, I mean, it was hard. And it had me going. Because I just, I was on master mode. So, you know, if I didn't hit him in a certain amount of time, he would, you know, recharge his energy. And I can't remember what his name is. I would probably mispronounce it e anyways. But you fight this monk at the end and boy howdy does he pull out all the stops to test you but it was worth it because after you defeat him you get the master cycle zero which is the coolest thing to do in this game like it's so fun to me just riding around hyrule on this motorcycle but it's not infallible the motorcycle one can't go in water i was hoping it would be kind of like uh a jet ski type motorcycle whenever it hit the water but it can't do that and in the trailer to me it looked like it could go up mountains which it cannot i was really excited about that and you can't summon it everywhere um you can't summon it indoors obviously and uh sometimes it does seem to go faster than the game can keep up with, I guess. Like, if there's a bunch of moving, like, particles on the screen, such as, like, going into Rito Village or um, Hyrule Castle, which, awesome that you can summon it in Hyrule Castle. But all the, like, Ganon Malice particles are floating in the air, and it just, like, slows it down, I guess, and then the motorcycle goes faster than the game can load because i've ex i experienced it several times where the, i would be driving and then the game would just like freeze i didn't know what it was i thought my game like froze at one point at one point my switch did shut down unexpectedly i don't know if that's a glitch with my switch or with the dlc but i was hunting korok seeds and it just said an unexpected error occurred turn off switch and luckily it had just auto saved so it wasn't that upset about it but yeah it was a uh, I don't know if that's because of that or if I'm just unlucky and had it happen either way wasn't a big deal to me because the game auto saves pretty often but yeah the champions ballad doesn't add too much story wise I was slightly disappointed with that because, you know, post credits of Breath of the Wild, Zelda is talking and she's like, oh, Varuta has stopped working. We need to go investigate this. I thought for sure that's what the Champion's Ballad was going to be about. Like, Ganon was coming back and shutting down the Divine Beast so they wouldn't take off half his health or something. But, no, nah, apparently not. Maybe we'll get something in the future. I don't know if... Nintendo said they're done with DLC or if they're still coming out with more of it but 
Champion's Ballad was definitely worth the $20, I would say. Coupled with the first DLC pack of clothing items and the extra clothing items and horse gear you got in the Champion's Ballad DLC. The Ganon suit is pretty awesome. It has some really cool um, stats to it because it says it's disguised, so it's kind of like Majora's Mask where you can just walk up to goblins and they won't attack you. But also, bone weapons do more damage. I thought that was really cool because I haven't encountered any weapon that does so anything like that. And, you know, you get Link's, uh, Toon Link's shirt from Wind Waker. Really cool to have the crawfish shirt. And then you get, uh, you know, the rabbit hood from Link Between Worlds, which also does something special. It increases your sideways climbing speed, which one is not that helpful, but hilarious because it's easily like one of the better references to the game it's from. And it's just. It's definitely worth it. I mean, if you have Breath of the Wild, odds are you got the the pass to have both DLCs. But if you haven't, I would highly recommend it. I'm going to give this DLC about a 7 out of 10. It was really fun, good, not great. Didn't add too much story. And really just talked about... It added more to the characters. Like, each champion has a lot more character to them now like Rivali is just really cocky and apparently hates Link and Daruk is scared of dogs and that's hilarious Mifa is more in love with Link than we thought and that story was very like cute and heartwarming to me Robosa was like besties with Zelda's mom all of the characterization for the champions I liked a lot I just wish there was more story to the DLC but I mean also it's a missed opportunity on Nintendo's part this isn't Zelda related but they should have had a free update for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe including Breath of the Wild Link and the Master Cycle Zero I mean it just makes sense he's in the game anyways why not give him two characters in his actual motorcycle but that's maybe Nintendo would do that later but Champion's Ballad, definitely worth it. If you haven't played it yet, I would highly recommend it. Master Cycle Zero is easily one of the funnest things to do. You can just ride for days, and it's actually a few seconds faster than the horse. So, get after it.